So hello everyone, I'm very happy to, to be here with you. Today, my name is uh, Maria Sternativo uh, and I work in the grant uh, sector of DG Justice, meaning that my main job is uh, monitoring the projects uh, and then taking care of the assessment. But part of our, uh, my job is also uh, um, uh, be a member of the uh, internal working group on gender mainstreaming. That's why I'm very happy uh, to be uh, here with you today. Um, I will present, I will show you now the agenda um, for our presentations. As you see, there will be a welcome address uh, done by my colleague uh, Rafael, and then we will have uh, two parts. One uh, part that is going to be more on key concepts and definitions, uh, so to give you a little bit uh, of uh, context, also in terms of the policies of gender equality, um, uh, followed by a Q&A session. Uh, and then part two will be more focused, more practical in how to integrate uh, a gender perspective uh, into uh, your projects. And again, there will be a Q&A sessions uh, for, for participants. Uh, and uh, I will move now to the next slides, giving the floor to my colleague, uh, Rafael. Thank you so much, Maria, for this introduction. And welcome and many thanks for attending today's workshop on gender mainstreaming, promoting gender equality and integrating a gender perspective into our funding opportunities is a key objective for us. Today, we want to explain to you why it is essential to consider gender when speaking about EU funding and outline how you can ensure you identify gender differences and address them into your projects. Projects funded by the SURF program are inherently linked to gender equality. The SURF program is the EU flagship program for human rights and gender equality. Therefore, it places importance on gender mainstreaming. Let me give you a quick background information to help you understand our commitment to gender equality. The Commission has recently increased its effort on gender mainstreaming funding and started a pilot project to mainstream the entire EU budget. There's a strong will from the EU institutions to track and analyze the EU's budget's impact on gender equality. Colleagues in DG Just work closely together with colleagues from DG Bust and the Task Force Equality to translate the Commission's priority of a union of equality into the funding practice of EU funding programs. As a result, you see in our calls for proposals many sentences that highlight gender aspects. In fact, if you have recently applied for funding under the SURF program, you will have noticed a gender perspective has also been integrated in the evaluation of your projects. This has, of course, not happened overnight. It has taken a joint effort of colleagues from DG Justice and our agency, the EIKEA, to translate on a case-by-case -case basis a gender perspective into the core document. Thanks to the hard work of colleagues, the SURF program is a pioneer in gender mainstreaming EU funding. It serves as an example for other EU funding programs and provides impulses for the Commission to advance gender mainstreaming to other areas in funding beyond grants. Many thanks again for being here with us today. And now I pass back the floor to my colleague Maria, who will outline to you why we need gender mainstreaming in funding. Thank you. Um, thank you, Rafael, for the uh, welcome address. Uh, we will now start with the uh, part one, um, indeed, because we believe it is interesting to start uh, understanding why we need uh, gender mainstreaming in projects. Um, and we would like to start uh, with this picture to give uh, an example. As you can see, uh, in, in the picture, there's a bridge, and this example uh, comes from the uh, Swedish Civil Contingency Agency that um, it's responsible for uh, public safety, civil protections, um, emergency management, etc. 
um, at one point they had uh, to uh, send a task force uh, to build a bridge. But before doing that, um, they decided to have uh, to have a training on how to um, introduce to uh, have a gender perspective um, in these uh, constructions. At the beginning, this was not um, really welcomed by the team. It was not really understood uh, why um, this training was needed uh, for such a simple task uh, of constructing of, of building simply building a bridge. Uh, but then, thanks to the, the trainer, uh, um, they started asking themselves some questions, such as, who is going to use this um, bridge? Um, and of course, answering just the inhabitants of the, of the city, of the village, is not sufficient, because then, uh, the discussion went on asking, uh, for example, uh, whether men were using mainly car and they started to observe that instead um, women and uh, kids, so uh, boys and girls, were mainly crossing the bridge um, uh, on foot, so walking. Uh, at the end, uh, after the discussion, they understood that they um, could have just um, uh, built a sidewalk, so um, um, a path that is separated by cars in order to uh, uh, reduce the risk for uh, women, uh, boys and girls uh, to get uh, into accidents caused by cars. Um, and this is very uh, uh, a simple example uh, to show how important it is to ask a few simple questions at the beginning of any project in order uh, that your interventions, your activities, uh, the activities that you uh, suggest with your uh, project really benefit the entire population. Going on to the next slide, um, we uh, can start from the very basis. So the, the concept, uh, what do we mean by gender? And for that, we refer to the definition of the European Institute for Gender Equality that tell us that um, by gender, we mean the social attributes and opportunities associated with being female and male and to the relations, uh, relationships between women and men, girls and boys, as well as the relations between women and those between men. So uh, for attributes, social attributes, we simply refer to the roles, uh, behaviors that we, we have in, in our societies, in our communities. And for opportunities, for example, we can refer uh, to different access to education or to different access to resources, as we saw in the example before of the bridge, uh, where um, women and men might have different access, uh, for example, to uh, public transport. Moving on to the uh, next slide, uh, we would like to give you a very short um, overview on the history of gender equality in the, in the EU. And to do that, uh, we start really from the very beginning uh, with the Treaty of Rome, uh, where um, for the first time we have this article, uh, the article that is mentioned, uh, 119, where um, we introduced for the first time the principle of uh, equal pay for equal, equal work between uh, women and men. But the very uh, the the, uh, the turning point, a very important uh, step ahead in the history of gender equality, uh, is reached only in 1995 uh, at the UN Beijing Conference of Women. Uh, where for the first time we have this concept of gender mainstreaming, where we uh, finally understand uh, that it was important to have a perspective in different uh, thematic areas, in particular um, um, in uh, 12 areas going from education, eradication of poverty, uh, fight um, um, uh, against violence. Um, and uh, uh, for the first time, gender mainstreaming is uh, considered as a key strategy. Going ahead, uh, then looking at the uh, following treaties of the EU, uh, and I mentioning, and I would like to mention the Amsterdam Treaty and the Lisbon Treaty, uh, we witness a strengthen uh, of the legal basis uh, for gender mainstreaming. And just uh, to make an example, if we look at Article 8 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the EU, uh, we see that um, in all its activity uh, activities, the European Union shall aim to eliminate inequalities. Uh, between uh, uh, women and men. 
And last but not the least, uh, I would like to mention uh, the recent, uh, recently launched uh, gender equality strategy uh, that has uh, three main goals. Um, the freedom for, uh, from uh, uh, gender-based violence and stereotypes, equal opportunities in our economies, and equal ch uh, chances to lead uh, our society. Um, uh, as we saw also in the evolutions on, on the treaties and the conference of the UN, we, we can really see um, an evolution in now uh, in different approaches that has been taken. Um, looking at uh, the first step uh, of equal treatment uh, was based on the fact that uh, the approach was that uh, uh, we uh, treat everybody uh, at the same way. Um, but of course, uh, you can see uh, that, um, for, for example, in the example of the of the bridge, was the idea of uh, we give everyone, all the inhabitants of a of a, of a city, um, the same opportunity. But of course, this cannot uh, is not really efficient. Cannot really benefit equally uh, all the population. For this reason, we moved from uh, this approach of equal treatment to positive actions, where the focus is not on the opportunities, on the resources, but rather on the outcome, so on the results that you can um, obtain uh, with your um, intervention. But still, this is not enough. Um, and um, the most efficient approach is the gender mainstreaming, because through gender mainstreaming, we really focus on the system uh, and we aim for a structural change uh, where we can really benefit um, the population based on the individual needs. And I would like uh, to show you this uh, picture. Uh, some of you might be um, uh, might have seen this um, already uh, in, in in the past. Um, but this translate uh, this picture really translates uh, the, the approaches that we uh, that we saw in this slide. Because in the first picture we see uh, the equal treatment. All these three people are given the same um, resource, so the same. All of them has one box. But the result is that uh, just two of them can enjoy uh, the, the match. In the second one, we see that um, the, uh, the strategy is rather based on positive actions. So we want to focus on the result. And the, re and the result is that everyone uh, must be able to enjoy the, um, uh, the match. And uh, we see a redistribution of resources. So this person uh, did not need, uh, for example, a box that is given to the other person. But uh, as we can see, the, the, the best and most efficient um, uh, approach is um, giving, um, like uh, removing, sorry, uh, removing the structural barriers, um, uh, still taking care of the safety of the people with these fans. But we can see that uh, removing, um, so having a systemic uh, change uh, can benefit uh, everyone. And uh, before I end my uh, the, the first part of uh, this presentation, I would like to uh, close by saying that uh, the Commission focuses more and more on, on gender in our spending, in our funding programs, uh, because in this way we have we can ensure higher quality of projects through better alignment with the target group needs. Uh, we can also ensure higher value for money, where the right people are involved in the project in the right way. We prevent unintentional harm to specific social groups, and we avoid discrimination of women and men. And um, another picture that can um, that can uh, that reminds us of uh, uh, the importance of uh, taking care of the uh, individual needs of the target group. And we see here uh, this um, gardener that uh, doesn't pay attention to uh, the different needs of the plants. Where we see on the on the right, the cactus uh, does not need uh, the same amount of water of of other plants. And um, so this is the end of um, this first part on the concept and the history. We wanted just to have uh, a quick introduction on, uh, on uh, gender equality policies. So if you have any uh, questions, uh, please um, let me know. And then I give the floor to my colleague, uh, Rafael. Thank you, Maria, a lot. So uh, the first opportunity for your questions, uh, either by raising your hand and asking or by writing into the chat in English or Slovene. 
if you have any questions, okay. The first one is here. Uh, why is EU focused only on two genders? This is wrong in the opinion of uh, our colleague. Rafael, you want to take this question? Uh, I'm referring also to other strategies coming from uh, DG Justice, for example, the LGBT uh, strategy and uh, the, the synergies that um, uh, can be built, as well as also the collection of data. I see the following questions on um, uh, transgender people and non-binary people, our efforts to collect data in a more inclusive way. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. I think you, you almost answered it. Um, so yes, of course, um, the, the, the Commission uh, respects the right of people to self-determine their gender. So um, in this way, we also have, as Maria already said, um, different strategies that focus on non-discrimination and in particular, people who don't identify either as women or men. And uh, to underline this, our funding program, the SURF program, also allows you to track data of people who self-identify as non-binary. Then, thank you so much. Um, now we start with the second part and dive more into aspects of gender mainstreaming and gender analysis that then will help you mainstream your projects. And I would also like to start off with a definition given by Egel on gender mainstreaming that relates to the how, how to integrate a gender perspective. So our institute defines gender mainstreaming as a strategy towards realizing gender equality. It involves the integration of a gender perspective into the preparation, design, implementation, monitoring and evaluation of policies, regulatory measures, and spending programs to promote equality between women and men and combating discrimination. I'd like to briefly rephrase this and highlight that we will later go also through these building blocks, which are here on the slide on the line. So we'll look into design, the implementation and the monitoring and evaluation. And what is very important is to take away, gender mainstreaming is about to identify opportunities to promote gender equalities, and then to take action based on your analysis to help people not to be discriminated and to promote gender equality. Next slide, please. The second important concept, as I mentioned, is the gender analysis who relates to the questions who and why. And here we also use to confer the commission definition that defines a gender analysis as the study of differences in the conditions, needs, participation rates, access to resources, control of assets, decision-making powers, etc., between women and men and their designed gender roles. Here we come back to our definition at the beginning. So the socially constructed roles. Now, I also would like to briefly rephrase um, the, the analysis by looking here at the different dimensions. So we said, as we saw already in the definition, there are different dimensions that were listed. And here we try to summarize the ones these are most important to look at when you design your project. So what we start off is a situation, situation analysis. What do we mean by this? So we look at socioeconomic factors, such as the employment, the income of the people you want to target, their educational background, health status, maybe disability status if applicable. Then we look at households if you design your project. Is there any care work involved? Who is doing the care work? Is it paid? Is it unpaid? How much work is it? Who is doing the work? Is it intensive? Then mobility, very important when you organize a conference, special segregation, who can attend the conference? Where should it be located? Exposure to violence and harassment. And coming back to this traditional roles, what is the social constructed roles of the people you want to target? 
Are there any stereotypes affecting them or prejudices? Then very closely look at your target group when designing your projects and the stakeholder and beneficiaries. So if you receive the grant from European Commission, ask yourself, okay, um, in, the, in the sector I want to target, who are the consumers and beneficiaries of the services? Then investments. Are there any other interest groups at stake that relate to my project? Who has access to these investments and for whom were they made? And also very important is the barriers to access these services and to use infrastructure, um, as we've seen earlier also with the bridge project that, that tells very good together. And also very important and related to the gender equality strategy. So the participation in decision making procedures. So are there maybe any quotas in your project you want to install? Is there a need for it? who is involved in decision-making in the sector and who has voting rights. Now, um, we come back to the three main building blocks of uh, gender mainstreaming and gender and uh, conducting a gender analysis for your project. And we start off with the needs assessment, what I also like to call identifying the opportunities to promote gender equality. The second block, is the implementation and communication of your project. And last but not least, going to look into monitoring and evaluation of your project. As you have already seen, um, and I would like to highlight this, what is important when you conduct a gender analysis and gender mainstream your project is to ask yourself the right questions and put them into the context of your project as we've seen with the bridge project was about mobility and connection and who is using it. So let us quickly go through these guiding questions here that should give you a good idea about the different parameters you should take into account when designing, implementing and monitoring and evaluating your project. So very important is who is the target group? So both indirect and direct of your project. Are there women, men? both, maybe other people who don't identify either as women or men, who will benefit, who may will lose, are there any risks, and wh whose interests are at stake, who will benefit, which women, which men, or other people. Have women and men um, who are challenged by a certain issue been consulted? So do you take into account the perspective of the people you want to help? How have they been involved in the development of the solution, like in your design phase? Did, was there a consultation maybe where you asked them about their needs and the solutions they would seem appropriate to them? What specific mechanisms can be proposed to encourage and enable people of an unrepresented gender to participate in the project? Again, here we look also at decision-making, very important. Well, has and does what? So here we look at the resources, access to them, time and the location of the activities and decision. What is the influence of the socioeconomic and cultural context on the design and implementation of your project? This really highlights, in other words, it's very important you understand the context and how to create a project that responds to the needs embedded in the context you're operating. Next slide, please. Now, we try to break down these questions in a step-by-step -step approach in four stages. Step one is related to the needs assessment. So collect information and disaggregated data on the target group. Who is your target group? Unpack them, look which social group do they belong to? What are their attributes? What are their resources? What, are, what is their influence? Uh, what are their problems? Are they of risk of discrimination, violence, etc.? Next step, identify, <laughs> identify gender inequalities and their underlying causes. So in step one, you created a map and collected data and have different points. Now it's important to interpret this data and connect the dots on the map that you just created. 
and then to see, okay, but for example, but why uh, women don't have the same access to mobility as men? Or why is it um, that access to education um, seems to be limited to men? Next step then, Con consult. <laughs> consult directly with the target groups. So do a reality check. See, okay, you did your desk research, you made an interpretation. Now it's the time to check. Okay, is this really true? Last step before we go on, evidence-based conclusions to inform effective programs and, and policies. So now comes the synthesis of all you've gathered, and then you find the solutions to tackle the specific problems in a way that responds to the needs of the people you want to help. Next slide, please. Now, again, we come back to the three building blocks. And very importantly, here we try to give you the questions. We really will, of course, also receive uh, the presentation after, after we finished, um, that particularly relate to the individual building blocks. So the first is the needs assessment. And I, I'm probably repeating myself, but it's so important, this part, of the project, it is really the building block that helps you then present um, to the commission a very, very robust and quality project because you really establish them clearly the needs of the target group and explain to the commission why there's a need for action. Let's have a closer look into that. So questions you should ask doing your needs assessment are, are women's needs in the area of your project the same as those of men? So are there different needs of the people you want to target? Are the project objectives designs based on a robust analysis and aligned to strategic needs related to gender? So here, please tailor your project, very important. And then did you do a reality check? So have they women or men or people who don't identify neither as women or men being consulted on the needs and opportunities that are linked to your project. And then also, what is the division of labor, income, and resources in your region? So again, um, who, who has decision-making power in a way? Is any gender predominantly visible in leadership positions? So maybe you want to make an awareness raising campaign, and then it would be good maybe to highlight the roles of the people that are underrepresented. Next slide, please. Moving on to the second block, implementation and dissemination. So here, you now establish the needs. Probably now it's a time to put it into practice. So questions to ask are, are the objectives clearly designed based on a representative consultation aligned to strategic gender needs? So here again, please check if your project really responds to the needs of the people in the way you envision it to be implemented. Are there any specific gender factors, let's say location, mobility, care, limiting the participation in your project? A very common example are conferences that are or events, workshops that are organized at times that are not suitable for caretakers of either gender. So there's then a conflict with having to care for family and being able to participate in an event. Are there specific changes introduced by the project and how would they impact women or men or people who don't identify as neither? So again, here it's also about thinking about the risk as you go along. Is there anything that might harm people? Are there risks? And then how to address them? Are the members of the consortium equally balanced in terms of representation and their functions? Here we look inside your program, uh, project and the working conditions. So ask yourself, who is working in my team? Is there gender balance? Who's involved? Is there enough diversity in my team? Who's taking decisions? Are dissemination and communication activities implemented with a gender sensitive language? This is so important. Um, especially if you want to launch an awareness raising campaign. Language is a big part of what we say that adds a lot to the content. 
So please be aware you use language that is inclusive and non-discriminatory. Next slide, please. Now we look into the last part. We have the gender perspective on the key building blocks here. And the last one is monitoring and evaluation. So now you advanced your project, you're at the stage where you can check, have you reached milestones? And in the end, you check how well they reached. And here the important questions are, are people from all gender involved in the monitoring and evaluation? So check from different points of view, what is the uh, added value from the point of view from your participants? are indicators to measure the project progress and goals gender sensitive. So let's say you identify it early on in your needs assessment an opportunity to promote uh, more equal participation in uh, political participation. Say we have the upcoming European elections. Um, maybe you identified in your project an opportunity to raise awareness of women not being uh, equally represented in politics. And then you could have an indicator that tracks how many women you reached through your awareness raising campaign and encourage them to participate maybe in a workshop that you organized that um, makes them aware of the opportunities to stand as a candidate. Then does your data collection and interpretation approach allow to capture differences, uh, gender differences? This is so important. And um, what I'd like to highlight in this regard is um, you started the work very well off with your needs assessment. You looked into all the gender differences. It's so important you feed this information back to the commission because the data you collect, the conclusions you draw with your projects that are then put into the final reports, give um, the, the, the commission a feedback also on, on all your observations and make the commission then aware based on your project, uh, what are problems, what are improvements and what are challenges for the future that could inform also future policies. Then, did you explore the option to formulate gender specific milestones and goals for your project? Again, this links closely with the indicators that you could create. So um, you could think about um, quotas you want to reach as a very basic first step. Um, and on a, on a more advanced level, um, you could even think about um, changes of attitudes, behavior that are very important when we talk about gender stereotypes. So did your pro uh, project maybe um, make a certain group aware how its behavior affects another one and then to report on it? Next slide, please. There, I pass then the floor to Maria, who will now give you an example of a project um, that was funded under the European uh, Remembrance Strand of the SURF program. And um, she will give you all the details. Maria, the floor is yours. All right. <clears throat> So thank you, Raphael. So the, the example that we are going to see uh, is a project awarded uh, under the uh, Remembrance Call. Uh, it was awarded last year. So what I will do is uh, I will present you a summary of the project, what it, it is about, and then uh, giving concrete examples based on the proposal of uh, this consortium on how uh, to include uh, a gender perspective in the activities of the project. So the project uh, is a cross-sectoral cooperation of public institutions, civil society organizations, and teaching institutions involving Jewish history and education experts from Croatia, Italy, Slovenia, and Poland. The objective of the project is to engage young people in the culture of remembrance and empower them to be aware and act in response to the anti-Semitism today. Uh, one of the main activities will be uh, that the, the students will research events from their local communities related to the Holocaust and commemorate those events by using art. They will also implement an initiative for uh, raising awareness of the hate speech uh, in their communities, and then they will make recommendations for policymakers on how to tackle the issue. By looking at the um, 
uh, needs assessment uh, already at proposal stage. Um, uh, the, the members of the, this consortium, they noted, uh, they uh, made reference to a research that was conducted by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Uh, and this research found that uh, gender roles can shape the narratives that the students are attracted to. So gender becomes uh, a very important factor in how students respond and understand um, uh, historical events. In some cases, girls respond more attentively to the personal experiences of Holocaust survivors, while boys tend to be more interested in the actors, the perpetrators of the Holocaust. So as you can imagine, um, at the moment we are aware of that, this is a very important research to refer to because it can influence then uh, the activities and the impact of uh, your project. For this reason, uh, these research uh, um, uh, findings are taken into consideration in this project idea and in the way they plan the activities. Uh, concretely, uh, for this, uh, in order to conduct uh, the student research, the methodology uh, that is used is the local history research. Uh, and uh, we can see an example of how students will pay attention to gender mainstreaming. Uh, under the quantity point of view, it will be uh, done simply by having equality of the research events so that men and women are equally represented. And then in terms of uh, more in terms of quality, um, they will consider the difference in position and roles of men and women in society at that time. And in that regard, uh, the same event, as we saw uh, proved by the, that research that we mentioned before, the same event uh, can have different impacts um, uh, on a person based on their uh, gender. Uh, what uh, the consortium, so the, the project partners uh, did, at the, uh, we, um, did at the beginning of the project implementation, they conducted uh, a gender impact assessment with the objective of adapting activities and make sure that any discriminatory effects are removed or mitigated. And for this purpose, a very concrete action that can be done um, is that uh, you can decide to, in case you don't have the expertise within your, uh, within, uh, your own uh, team, within your own organization, uh, you can decide to subcontract an outside experts on gender rights and equality that can help you um, uh, during the, the implementations at the proposal stage, but also uh, 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 in case your project is selected um, to adapt uh, your activities if needed. And so after conducting the gender impact assessment, the expert uh, will give recommendations to the project team um, to improve, uh, if applicable, any aspect regarding gen gender mainstreaming and how to do it. And last, in terms of implementation and disseminations, uh, also as we, uh, as Raphael was, was uh, showing before, um, we um, can also pay attention in terms of the consortium composition and staff, um, uh, the, if there's a balance and uh, if needed, if there's a lack of expertise, you can always uh, contract uh, an expert to support uh, the, the implementation of your project. Uh, and uh, the importance of gender mainstreaming and non-discrimination -dis applies to potential personnel. But of course, um, it doesn't mean that uh, on our side we ask uh, each organization to uh, change completely uh, or uh, to end uh, contracts uh, of uh, people that already work there to ensure uh, balance in your team. But um, it's just to start uh, thinking, also already the act of thinking of the composition of uh, within your organization can help um, uh, understanding who takes the decisions and who is doing what within your organization and how this can influence your own daily activities as well as the activities of the project. And last but not the least, uh, in this uh, specific project, so in the Project United, uh, they also highlighted that in the, the project activities, communication, dissemination, campaigns, feasibility will uh, ensure a gender inclusive uh, language. Uh, we are happy uh, to uh, collect any questions and I might uh, give back the floor to Rafael um, for uh, the closing remarks and the mention to resources that you might wish to uh, refer to.
So we are uh, open the floor for the questions, if you agree first. Uh, yes. If everyone, anyone has questions, please raise your hands. If not, I will start with what I got in the chat. I got two questions in the chat and the first is very practical. So we have an organization that will work with children. They will um, develop their activities in a school which assures that both boys and girls will be involved equally. And for them, it's very important that they are involved uh, both. And the question is how to gender mainstream such activities. So activities that will be in school where already we have girls and boys and they have equal opportunity to participate to these activities. Is that some more information on what kind of activity that is? Mm, I think that there will be uh, workshops. Okay. Uh, if a um, person who asked can write more or maybe would like to join us, I think that will be workshops during which uh, these children will be able to gain some new knowledge from the addressed field. Okay, so um, um, the first thing would be good to see, okay, who are also the trainers? Because it will be very different from which point of view it will be explained. Um, so for example, if a workshop is given by a man, it might be perceived different than it would be from a woman. Yeah? Um, and also in how the context is designed, uh, the content is designed. So let's say, let's stick with this, um, um, European Remembrance example. Let's say it's a work, workshop in a school on, on in the school on on history of, of the country. Then it would be very important to look. Okay, who had the role in the past and who um, who is known for for significant events? So more than often, um, history focuses on on white men and what they did, or who narrated it. Usually, uh, historians in history over course of history have been men. So then it would be very important to highlight in the narratives um, which were, had women or other people or children, yeah, maybe uh, to, to also take age into consideration and would be important what, what important um, contributions they made or to see maybe is there a counter narrative based on what we see in the mainstream textbooks, is there maybe different perspectives that sheds light on different issues? Um, here would be also very important to look at the socioeconomic roles um, that people had in the past. So what kind of professions they have, if we talk about history or, uh, of a country yeah, and look, okay, um, who, who was uh, participating in, in, in politics on, on different levels. So these were all elements where we could look into, into, into the history of a country or a city, um, that there you could integrate a gender perspective by looking at the different roles and the positions of the people in society and explaining from different points of view, um, what were the ideas about them. There we also come back to stereotypes maybe even to make uh, children aware at an early age that uh, gender has certain roles ascribed over the course of history and maybe also then in the next step to create a contrast okay but this was a view from the past 50 years ago what do we see today yeah and to help them understand the change um, of these roles evolving over time thank you Raphael thank you very much was um very well explained and uh, I'm understanding it better uh, also myself, mm. thank you. So and the second question uh, is uh, for you, Raphael. What do you mean with the question, are people from all gender involved? Does this mean women and men? It includes women and men, but it can also include non-binary people that don't, that self, themselves, they don't identify neither as women or men. Thank you. Uh, are there... maybe, maybe one last comment. So um, if you fill an application, you will see that you will be asked to fill what we call Part C. 
In part C of the application form, you are asked to indicate how many people will participate in a certain event or activity or related to an indicator. And there you have the chance to make an estimation. It doesn't have to be exact science, but you can make an estimate how many people of which gender will participate. So and there you can choose women, men, and non-binary. Thank you, Raphael. Uh, so uh, do we have other questions? Uh, anyone raising the hand or writing? into it, if not, uh, um, I myself have a question. Is every, it's possible to gender mainstream every project? So, um, yes, the thing is, what is important, what I also want to highlight to the collection of data. Um, there is barely a project that has no um, gender dimension. What do I mean with this? Um, a lot comes back to human interaction or the use of resources. And there, um, all people are involved. And therefore, we have always a gender perspective to be taken into account. There are exceptions. So for example, in the justice program, so the sister program of um, the SURF program, there's a specific call that supports the connection of two IT systems. So there's barely any human interaction. Some people can argue, well, but still it's the data used from people, right? And then um, it has a, a gender dimension, therefore, because people have a gender, right? Uh, but there are some things that are very technical where um, integrating a gender perspective fully um, is, is not feasible in terms of the content of the project, because after all, we talk in uh, 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 one IT system that is then connected to another one. So this is an example where we don't have such a strong focus. And I also want to highlight, you won't be penalized in these instances when you explain in your needs assessment, um, if you recognize maybe for your specific program, the gender dimension might be limited, that's okay. Um, you won't be penalized. What is important that you reflect this in your project. If you have a very, very technical project in the serve or in the justice program, let's say, and that connects, it's very super technical and there's not a lot of human interaction and you reflect that and you let us know why you don't elaborate so much on gender, that's fine, that's good. If, however, um, as you have in the equal call, if you have in the Daphne call, in the, of course, the gender equality call, in the remembrance call, as we see, the SURF program, as I also said in the beginning, is really has gender equality at its heart. That is a whole equality strand that has also is reflected in other strands of, of, the, of the program, the union values strand, the uh, Europe for citizens strand, and so on. So for the SURF program, we really expect you um, to reflect in your needs for certain this gender perspective. And um, so for the SURF program, yes, please always think about gender. Then you can of course still reach a different conclusion, but it's important you let us know why. <laughs> and this comes back to conducting a gender analysis. Thank you, thank you very much. Um... Questions, questions, questions. Uh, okay. Um, I got something in my chat. Just a second. Mm -hmm. So I hope I'll be able to translate it because it's uh, really uh, specific. It's how to implement um, mindfulness with children with. Um, behavior and emotional problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this comes back to anticipating harm. So if you already recognize that children who may have bad experiences in the past and you're going to work with them in, in your project, it's very important you create a safe environment for them. Um, so here we speak a little bit also at the intersection to 
child protection, which is a different aspect that's very important uh, for the SURF program. And, um, and there you would need to see, um, can you maybe um, create a safe environment? Maybe that you can consult a facilitator who has experience in child protection. And then, and also, then we come back to the, uh, to the gender aspect in the content and how you present it is avoiding stereotypes and victimization. And the latter one is very important uh, if you speak about mindfulness. So in the content you present, make sure you don't paint a picture that's black and white and saying this group A is bad because da 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 da, and then group B da 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 da. So that's very important not to repeat and reproduce stereotypes in your content then. And um, if you want to explain a principle, um, try to, um, for children, play is also a very good approach or ask them to share their views. So a participatory approach might help because then the impulses come from the children. So that's also very important when working with children, participation. So, and then if the impulses come from them and let's say it's about them experiencing harm in the past, it's very important um, you have people that are trained to deal with these children, maybe a psychologist, the social worker in your, on your project team that can balance out that emotion. Yeah, when, when they talk maybe about harm they experience and so on. So um, that is very important. Have trained people then on, on your team, consult with them, make sure there's a safe space for children to express their views freely and to participate, share their feelings with, with you if you uh, work, uh, let's say, on a Daphne project that specifically deals with this project. Thank you. Uh, is the person, it's okay, the answer? You got the information you were hoping for? Oops, perfect. So um, the last uh, call for the questions. Uh, anyone left? If not, I would say thank you very much, uh, Maria and Rafael. Before for the, the, the coffee break, yes, uh, just you some, have some concluding words from my yes. side. I won't be long, I promise. Um, no, I forgot. So what, Sorry, I really like, forgot. No, no, no problem. No problem at all. Thank you so much, Nina. So um, what I would like to leave you with for your coffee break with, with some thoughts. Um, so to, to summarize very briefly, um, when talking about the integration of a gender perspective, it is about to understand the context you work in, unpack it, and based on the unpacked contrast, to make sense of it and to develop solutions that help people. And um, there is no one, uh, one size fit all approach, that's not possible. We cannot give you a cooking recipe uh, we say step one, two, three, four, five, and it's perfect. Um, when we talk about gender mainstreaming and integrating a gender perspective, it will be always about finding the right questions related to your context and then suitable answers. And I hope that the set of questions we provided you today will help you to think about the gender dimension in your projects and I'd like to, to thank you very much for your attention and uh, maybe briefly pass the, the floor to Maria if she wants to say something. Yeah, thank you, Rafael. Um, yeah, maybe uh, what I would like to compliment very, brevi very briefly, so uh, I don't uh, steal too much time to the break. Um, so from a project management uh, perspective, uh, maybe a, a reminder, a closing reminder of how important it is to keep, um, when at the moment you uh, design a proposal, you have an idea, always have in mind the smart indicators that you intervene in a specific uh, context, uh, then you have to be capable of measuring uh, your action, uh, your objective, 
objective has to be achievable. So you don't have you, you don't suggest something too ambitious uh, if you identify that, um, uh, for example, in the case of the bridge, you might have noticed, OK, you notice that uh, men use the car and women most go, uh, go on, on foot. But then you realize you start questioning why men have um, access to financial um, resources more than women and how you can intervene. But with the project, with your proposal, you cannot solve um, uh, thousands of years of uh, inequality. So it, it, it has to be always a, a solution, a project that is feasible and that you're, um, that it's impactful and then relevant and um, uh, time bound uh, because usually our projects last, uh, for example, two years. So I, I just wanted to um, uh, complement this saying that um, to keep this in mind and then uh, conducting a gender analysis, the mainstream agenda might uh, start um, uh, bringing something new uh, that maybe uh, you, you didn't think uh, about it before, and then you can see how this can uh, shape the activities or not. Maybe there is no need. Uh, or in case you see uh, like um, uh, that you lack expertise, it's also an opportunity when you write a proposal uh, to then uh, add in your estimated budget the fees, for example, for an expert that then can uh, help you throughout the projects. And you can start with a no-cost consultation of a, a psychologist in the case of workshop with children because maybe you do not have that expertise and then you can uh, rely and uh, claim costs under the project budget uh, so you can rely on an expertise um, that uh, you might not have so just this maybe a few practical tips uh, at the end so thank you <laughs>